Welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to go over some cold weather camping tips and experiences that I've had. If you plan on doing some cold weather camping, hopefully I can point out some things for you that may help you out. So number one, many of these RVs are marketed with these tank heaters. So my tank heater is right here. Now with that tank heater marketing, it's gonna give you a false sense of comfort that you think you can use this in the cold weather and that is very well not the case let me go over some of the things that i've done what works and what doesn't work my cold weather camping experience was a period about one week straight maybe a little over one week and the overnight temperatures were all in the teens or low teens the thing that i did of course was i stayed at a campground and i had full hookups so i utilized the electrical that came in the campground with the electrical, instead of using the propane heater, I used one of these electrical heaters. Now this is, uh, I've been through many of these. This is the one with an oscillating feature. And if, you, if you've if you ever used one of these, you know, you get a hot zone, even though it uh, oscillates, you get a hot zone. And of course the warm air goes up to the top. Very important, if you get one of these, the other item you would want to get is a 12 volt fan. You know, you know how fans work. It helps to obviously uh, distribute the uh, air around. And that really helps settle the hot and cold zones and makes the uh, temperature even throughout. Now with that electric space heater, I only have the single pane windows and I didn't put the reflectix or anything on the windows. But down to, I think we were down to about 13 degrees. This RV had no problem maintaining its temperature, and that's with no uh, window covers. The thing that we do have, of course, is we do have these curtains up in the front that isolates the cab area. That is very important. Even though we have insulated covers for the uh, windows, the cab itself, the Mercedes cab, gets very cold. So I would highly recommend some kind of curtain or at least a blanket to isolate that front area. And if you do that, the rest of the RV will not have any problems keeping up. Now, if you're boondocking and want to uh, camp in cold temperatures like that, you better have a big battery bank to support, support that as well as, of course, uh, full propane. Let me go over some of the things that you may want to know. On my RV, my freshwater tanks are physically inside the RV. So as long as I keep the RV warm, I don't have any chance of the tanks freezing. I know some RVs have the uh, tanks down below. I can't help you if you're in that uh, situation. But the weakness in the uh, this RV particularly is that all the plumbing lines run underneath the shower. That's the main uh, point where all my plumbing lines go. And underneath the shower, just an opening, a hole opening, and it goes right into my wet bay outside. This is a picture of the plumbing pipes with the shower pan removed. As you can see, all the plumbing pipes are exposed to the wet bay below. That is the main weakness because that wet bay is not heated. So of course it can easily freeze the pipes down there. So that is the main weakness. The second weakness of course is that my gray and black tanks are outside and they are only supported by this tank heater which has its limitations. Let's go ahead and jump into a clip of my cold weather experience and then we'll come back. Well, this is how we camp in cold weather. You can see it's 16 degrees outside, 25 in my basement or the wet day, refrigerator temperature, and that's, it says it's indoor, but it's right by the door. So our heater is on, electric heater. The actual thermostat or the true temperature inside is 71, 71 degrees. This is the condensation coming out of our single pane windows. It's coming out of these weep, weep holes here. The water comes out and you can see how cold it is. Again, hard to see because it's nice and sunny outside, but we're in Colorado and you can see the ice coming down. It's all ice. Not many RVs out here. It's bright and sunny, but it is a cold day. 
And let's go over here. So what, what you will notice is I do not have any water or sewer hooked up at all. The black line is the main shore power and the red line is actually power for the heat tape. You can see right here this heat tape right here is warm to the touch and that heat tape wraps back down and goes right here and goes to all my dump valves and my dump pipes and down to my macerator and it's covered in this insulation tape. So that's how we camp in cold weather. Now the other thing that your wet day will likely not be like mine is mine's all insulated and all my plumbing is above this insulation. The only parts that are exposed are these two brass fittings here but the rest is inside. So this basement, this heat tape works a little bit but you might want to put a light bulb in here or get excess heat tape. I, mine is 12 feet long. I should have probably needed about three to four more feet in here and I could have wrapped that heat tape around here. So that's how we do winter camping. What I didn't mention in the previous clip was what didn't work. And the biggest problem I had was the dump valves themselves. Now both the dump valves, I could not open them at all. They were frozen shut. And this was when I was trying to dump. It was in the temperature between 16 and 20 degrees outside. And either though I had this heat tape and this compartment was warm enough, underneath, I did have heat tape starting at this dump valve here, but I did not wrap it around enough times. I focused more on putting the heat tape on the pipe, which I didn't have to worry about that as much because there was no uh, liquid in there. So I would really focus on putting enough heat tape around those uh, dump valves. And that's really it. Now if you're going to do this more frequently and stay in consistent freezing cold weather, I would highly recommend, besides the heat tape, I would wrap those tanks, either though the tanks have tank heaters on. Uh, when I felt it in the uh, morning when it was really cold outside, they didn't seem to be working or uh, very effective. So ultimately what happened was, in order for me to dump, was that I waited until later on in the day it got to the high 30s, almost 40 degrees, and it was uh, those dump valves were unfrozen. Because I did give the old try of using a hair dryer and it just did not work. I spent too much time on it and it was easier just for me to wait until the day warmed up later on. So that's my learning lesson for you. So hopefully if you are planning on doing some consistent cold weather camping, you will have to take provisions outside of just what the factory gives you with the holding tank heaters. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and recap this. So if you're uh, camping in cold weather, you definitely want to have a good heating source. Whether it's an electric heater if you're plugged in, or a strong power bank and you can run your onboard furnace, that's very important. Then secondary is, of course, putting a cab curtain, isolate that cab area. And then most importantly, so you don't want to have some uh, damages, you want to get all your fresh water lines not to freeze. And you got to find your weakness points. Every RV is going to be a little bit different, but that is going to be your main weakness. And then your second weakness, of course, is going to be your dump tanks, your gray and black tanks. So really, that's it. Hopefully, these tips will help you out if you decide to do some cold weather camping. Now, if I had to do it all over again, I would definitely wrap my dump valves really well and also put insulation over those dump valves better in my gray and black tanks. I would also insulate them really well. And that's again if I planned on consistently camping in weather that's cold or stays freezing even during the daytime. Otherwise these RVs are just not set up for that. Now a lot of this stuff most of you probably already know or heard of. But until you go through the experience, it sounds really easy, but once you have to go through the motion and knowing you're going to camp in really cold weather, you got to do some preparation on it. Now, if, if you don't, you know, I know a lot of people put the antifreeze system in and still go camping. Well, that's not my form of camping. I like to have my full utilization of my RV. If you do it that way, then there's not much. You, you just have to drain all your tanks, uh, winterize it, and you can use your RV except, you know, of course, your plumbing. Well, that's really it. 
hopefully you like videos like this. I do have some more videos coming up. I think my next one is going to be probably my three-year uh, three uh, review. And if you like videos like this, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And we'll see you on the next video.